Save Thieves Season 8 is now well underway, but at launch, the developers sneaked in something that nobody realized, a brand new hat that looks amazing. So this is the fastest way and how to unlock the legendary Seafarer's hat. First off, what does this hat actually look like? Well, it's a bit of a hybrid between the Pirate Legend hat and the Golden Sailor hat, if you know what that is. As in, it's purple and gold, but it's not as bad as the Pirate Legend hat. It actually looks nice. You've got the two gold feathers coming off it, almost like the mercenary deal with the little circle on the hat with the gold outline, but overall, it's a purple hat. This looks really, really nice, and it might honestly be one of the best hats in the game. I know that a lot of you are obviously striving to get the Ghost Curse, so are probably wondering what it looks like with that. Well, I have got you covered. With the Ghost Curse, obviously, colours don't really matter, and so it's mainly about the design, and that's the key aspect. The design of this hat is really nice, and so it just naturally works well with the Ghost Curse. Massive thank you to Argyll Atom for showing the hat with and without the Ghost Curse for this video. He's an absolutely amazing guy and fellow content creator and streamer. Go check him out on Twitch, he streams 5 days a week and definitely go check him a follow and catch one of his streams. This video would not have been possible without him, so huge thank you to him once again. Alright, so how do you get the legendary Seafarer hat then? Well, arguably it's pretty simple, but it's also hard to do. Let me explain. To get this hat, you need to get a legendary pirate title in eight different captaincy alignments. That's right, I bet you didn't think we'd be revisiting captaincy this soon. Oh, let's have ourselves a pirate party! Once you've done this, you can head to any outpost and purchase it from the clothing store for gold, and then you'll have the hat in your inventory. The addition of two new alignments in Season 8 has made this achievement a lot easier to do. So before you would have had to level up the Captain Pirate alignment, which would mean getting 50 ships. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Alright, so, the fastest way to get this hat then is obviously gonna be the fastest way to level up all of these alignments. And seen as Captaincy released ages ago now, let's go back through the fastest way to level up every single alignment. Do bear in mind this will be for pirate alignments, since ship alignments, you don't need it to get this hat. So then, there are 10 different pirate alignments, but we only need to do 8 of them, so the ones we're not going to be doing are the rogue and the captain. Because the captain is excessively hard to level up, you'll never get to level 50 because it's literally there's 3 milestones, and for every milestone he's earning a ship, so you'd have to get 50 ships to legendary. And then the rogue is just really tedious to level up. It's literally just minutes playing shanties and sleeping, so you could farm it, just AFK, but that's no fun. Kicking things off with the Gold Seeker then. The Gold Seeker is a pretty simple one. The fastest way to level it up is just by doing the Gold Earned Milestone, as this is the easiest one to do by far. You'll get one class per 200,000 gold, so you're literally just me wanting to do the fastest way to earn gold grinds, which, personally, for Season 8, that's huge because it's really easy to grind gold in Season 8 if you're good at PvP. And also, there are, there are PvE ways to do it. You can just go around to shrines and sea forts. But of my 36 total class in the Gold Seeker, 24 of them come from gold urns. So that is the primary way to do it. For the Voyager, it's not a great answer, but the best thing I can suggest is to play the game. Because my overall class is 197, and 147 of those come from Days at Sea and Islands Visited combined, both of which you can't really grind out. There are other stuff like Robo's Dock, which is 13, and other bits and pieces, but the best way to do that is just play the game. I know it's not a great answer, but it's not really a grindable one, unless you want to go out and do Tall Tales, because there are Tall Tale milestones. The Emissary, for me, it's gold earned to the Reaper's Bones, because overall, gold earned to any company, you have to get 100,000 per class. For Reapers, it's 200,000, but it's easier to get Reaper stuff, although arguably with Athena it's now easy because if you represent the Guardians of Fortune then you're going to get incredible amounts of gold anyway. So I'd actually suggest doing that. I'm currently class 5 in it, 46,372 of 100,000 on my way to class 6. Before that I don't think I was class anything with gold earned for Athena. 
and I've been playing Season 8 a fair bit. My current allegiance is around 35, I believe, so it's not anything huge. So either of these two is the way to go. So I'd suggest Season 8 for this one. For the Hunter, eat food. So get into PvP. <laughs> With the Hunter, I am currently class 47 overall, and 42 of them come from Prisons Eaten, 4 of them come from Prisons Cooked, and Ancient Scales Court apparently is the other one, so that makes up my total 47, so Provisions Eaten is definitely the best way to go, so PvP all the way, or, or PvE, just make sure you're constantly eating. If you want to go to a seaport and just eat after getting all the food, you can do that, but, you know, we want to have some fun with these, don't just want to have a boring grind. With the feared, it's quite interesting. My total class is 145, and 54 of those come from cannons fired, but overall the whole like alignment makes up that total, like, it's relatively evenly spread apart from cannons fired, because the best way to level this up is doing what old reapers used to do, PvE, reaper, world events, and then going and hunting emissaries. I get that's harder to do now, but cannons fired, I mean Kraken's vanquished, there's like Megalodon's vanquished, shrines done, treasuries done, sea forts done, Four of the dams completed, phantom skeletons and sirens slain, so it is literally, it's more of a PvE faction. Let's move on to the ill-fated. The ill-fated <laughs> is simple, go into battle. Trips to the fair of the dam, minutes spent in storms, minutes spent on fire, repairs made, bales made by crew. You get the gist, you've seen this before. My total class is 75 in it. So, it really is the best way to do it, get into PvP. Season 8 makes it easier than ever. So regardless of whether you think you'll be leveling up the ill-fated, and it's not ridiculous amounts to get the next class, so, you know, go do it, I guess. <laughs> Alright, our final two are the Guardian and the Servant, and the Guardian and the Servant are both exactly the same, just for different factions, so we can just cover one of them, because I've not actually started the Servant yet, but I have been grinding out the Guardian, I'm currently class 51 in the Guardian. It's very interesting with these two classes, because they're actually really rewarding. Servant of the Flame ship sunk for the Guardian, I'm currently class 14, battles completed, faction champions attained, gold earned from Sands of Fate. It's all really, really rewarding, and you get it no matter what. Servant of the Flame ship sunk by defending, by seeking, you get the gist of this. The best way to do it is going into Season 8, you can't really farm this out, but what I would suggest is actively hunting them down. Because currently I'm finding that defending isn't the best way to level up either faction, and there is actually two milestones that progress no matter what per fight, because there's battles completed and there's also ships sunk. The whole thing progresses obviously, but those are the most prominent ones. At the end of the day, milestones will just come naturally to you as well. My current overall milestone since the launch of Season 7, remember, are the Gold Seeker 36, the Voyager 197, the Emissary 26, the Hunter 47, the Feared 145, the Rogue 12, the Ill Fated 75, the Guardian 51, the Servant 0 for obvious reasons, the Captain 6, and so they do just kind of come naturally to you as I say. Anyway, that does just about bring us to the end of the video. If you have any tips for anyone wanting to grind out specific milestones, do comment them, as I'm sure people want to get this hat really fast, so definitely share methods down in the comments below. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy them, please do consider leaving a like. It really helps out the channel an absolute ton, and subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest Sea of Thieves news, as and when it comes out on my Reddit, why not hit the bell as well so you never miss a single upload. But anyways, apart from all that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.